Hello everybody, welcome back to Cinema Savvy. It is myself, George, bringing you a brand new movie review. And this week I am reviewing Five Nights at Freddy's, the brand new film out in cinemas, streaming on Peacock in America, uh, co-written and directed by Emma Tammy. And I'm going to be giving my thoughts on this. So, as always, I do want to hear from you at home, so please do comment your thoughts. If you've played the game, let me know what your thoughts on the game is. You're looking forward to the film. If you've seen the film, if you're not familiar with the game and you've seen the film, I'm very curious about how this goes down with people, so I do want people to get involved, so please do comment. And if you are new to the channel, if you're new to our videos, if you're, of course, a film channel, so do subscribe if you like what you're going to get from this. And we've also got our social media, linktree.com slash cinema savvy. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Letterboxd, and Instagram, where we are posting on a variety of those. But... I mentioned I'm here to talk about Five Nights at Freddy's, and I think it's very fair to kick up with my history of the franchise, which is nothing, because I've never played the game. I've heard of the game. I'm aware of imagery of the game. The bears, I think everybody's familiar with. It's just something that's been in pop culture since the game launched. Obviously, it's been a humongous success. Had a film adaptation. There's been numerous games. I believe there's books or novels or comics or something as well. There's merchandise. It's huge. Uh, and an announcement... I can't seriously say I remember it being announced, but I consciously am aware of this film being in production. Only because I remember when Chris Columbus was attached to it, the director, of course, of the first two Harry Potter films and many other amazing films. Uh, and I was really curious about seeing what he could do. Again, I have no knowledge of the game. I've not played it. I've not researched it. Uh, I went into this completely blind, waiting to see what the film can do. I don't normally play games after watching the films anyway, so I probably wouldn't have dived into that. But my initial impressions on this film... I wasn't a fan, the understatement, polite term of the year, and I'm struggling in my head to come up with some positives about it, but I am going to talk about some of them, because Jim, Hen Jim Henson Production was involved in this, and I mentioned Chris Columbus a very short while ago was also attached. On paper, that's enough to get you going. That would be, okay, it's not because of the success of adapting Harry Potter, but you've got one of the most iconic production companies uh, in, in, in the industry in respect to animatronics, puppets, everything, the Henson Group, and that's an incredible name to be attached to something like this. And, and actually, now, there is a positive from the film, and it probably actually is, is that, but I'll get to those a little bit later. Um, and having Chris Columbus, a very well-established director, come on board again from an adaptation side of things would be great. I said, okay, I'd be curious by this. Now, of course, he departed the project, and actually doing a bit of reading, this went through developmental hell. There's been a lot of people come and go, come and go from this. And obviously the film has debuted online on Peacock at the exact same time it's been in cinemas. So it feels like COVID all over again. Uh, I don't know if this is the last film to do this. I don't know if there are more films planned of doing this. But this is going to be the number one film of the weekend in America. Uh, it's got quite a cool following. I've seen videos of people stealing signs from foyers at the cinemas. It's opened, I think, to 10 million on the first day. So, uh, preview sorry on Thursdays and they're talking about a 30 to 50 mil opening weekend so I'm curious about what this does financially I, I don't know the budget of the film in all honesty it, it looks like a very cheap made for streaming film so you'd imagine it can have some return and that's where I'm going to kind of start stemming into the next of this film I've not seen Josh Hutchson in anything since The Hunger Games uh, I'm sure I, I'm, that's on me not on him I just want to get that away very quickly because that sounded terrible when I said that aloud um and he's in the lead role in this. And, and again, I'm not familiar with the backstory of the game, if this is a character that's been brought over or not, I don't care. But when your opening scene is your lead protagonist senselessly beating someone uh, because he thinks it's someone that's stolen a child, it's hard to uh, sort of get on board with them as a character from that point. Uh, and if films do this. You develop characters, of course you do. But this film in particular is quite just simply one of the worst of the year. And I don't sort of wave that flag around. I'm catching up to a lot of films from this year. It's not the worst film I've seen, so that's something. It's not The Expendables 4, um, or Expendable, or, or whatever they tried to call it, or they tried to do with it. Um, this is actually a film. It has uh, sets, it has actors on set, it has production values, it has a story to a degree, it has things happen to a degree, and like that. And, and, and that's the scraping the barrel I'm going for with, with the positives of this, because what I struggled with is somebody that has no... Uh, understanding of how this game works. I was excited to see these bear things I've seen online for years. I was excited to see what's going to happen. What, is this going to be like a slasher horror? Is this going to be just a, a psychological one? Is it going to be where everyone's stuck in this one location and these things are coming after them? It was none of that. It it it. Most of the film is is a drama about a security guard looking for his younger brother, 
which I'm not going to do spoilers, but uh, if it didn't hit you once or twice in the film telling you that, every other scene seems to be flashbacks. And I was just sort of counting down the minutes. Once we have two or three flashbacks, it, it, it's a struggle to care. And not only is it predictable, um, Matthew Lillard's in this, who, of course, Shaggy from Scooby, of course, in the very first Scream film, put it on there with the intro, uh, and, and it will surprise nobody as well. But I like seeing him, and he's in two scenes, and it's it's, it's a waste. Um, and, and this is where I'm into the Josh Hutchinson role, is that I, I'm not sure of him as a lead actor, but I don't think he's got source material to work from. I don't. I think the script is dreadful. I think the story is awful. Uh, and I'm struggling to, to try and talk and give this some personality because the film doesn't have any. It's just a waste of my time trying to put it in there. And people that have spent time, of money to go to the cinemas to watch this, I really hope they get a kick from it. I know that there was a screening in London on Wednesday for press. I know it's been out of cinemas in the UK since Wednesday as well. But it's just something that I, I was quite shocked about how poor it is. Now, it is Halloween weekend. And it's the time of year where these kind of films do come out. They're going to do better at this time of year. Take away the fact it's a game. Let's look at Disney's Haunted Mansion that came out in August for some reason, but is streaming now. If that came out this weekend, that's a hit. That's going to get people to turn up. It's a humongous weekend for the box office for America, and this is the film that's going to have people going to watch it. Should they be going to watch it? Absolutely not. It's awful. And I struggle to talk about anything other than moaning, so I'm going to talk about the one thing I like, and that's the animatronic designs in this film. Now... I don't know the behind the scenes. I don't know if there's some point it's, it's actors in costumes. I know it literally is in a scene where you see that. But in other moments of the film, I'm not sure if it's standard props, again, animatronics. But I liked those designs. I like the production design of this pizza place that's been abandoned decades ago. And I'm guessing that's all from the game. It has to be, surely, because it's the only thing in this film that looked remotely interesting and, and intriguing to a point. Everything else was paint by the numbers from the supporting characters, from the characters you're in for one scene. It very much reminds you, if you're in the UK, you see these films that come on at Channel 5 at sort of 4pm in the afternoon uh, and they've never been distributed properly in their life. Now you can't put a horror film in there, but it feels like it is there and what I was curious about mostly is the demographic for the, the audience. I spoke to somebody at work today, they said that their son's a massive fan and plays the games, his son's maybe 7-8 years old. And I was like, well, he can't watch this film. We see someone get bit in half 20 minutes in. So I'm also, and it's rated 15 here. And I'm just sort of sat there thinking, okay, who is the demographic for this? Uh, and, and what's it going to be? Because nobody over the age of 15 here is surely going to like or care for this film. And if everyone that wants to watch it is younger, this is just a film you can't show them. And I think they'd find it boring. If they want to go to watch the teddy bears kill people or whatever it's going to be, whatever they do in the games, half of the game, I really hope, is not a security guard with... Uh, sleeping trying to find out what happened to him at a much younger date the kids don't want to hear about someone being behind on bills or stuff like that and it's very strange how this has come to be and I can't put my words around it so I'm going to round off pretty early with this review Five Nights at Freddy's is out in cinemas should you go and watch it? Absolutely not there are Killers the Flower Moon is out this film's 1 hour 49 it's not 3 hours 24 I'd not get my phone out to check. Well, I didn't get my phone out ever at the cinema, but I wasn't counting down the minutes because of the phone. I'm three hours in, I'm not counting down minutes. I feel I'm a couple of minutes from the ending. I'm not checking my phone. I'm not checking a watch to see what time is it. This is one hour 49. It's not justified in a one hour 49 runtime. Take this down to an hour and a half out without this ridiculous backstory that nobody cares for. And then when there's other characters, other supporting characters who come into it, it's just too predictable. And this is where I am. I don't talk about horror films often. I do, I'm one behind on one I really want to watch this year. Uh, Raka Raka's directorial debut is now on Netflix in the UK. I'm going to be watching that this weekend. Cannot wait for that. I watched them since I was younger. And that's the premise was intriguing and original. I'm going to go and see that. But with this, it's just poor. It's primarily on Peacock. That's it's where we watch WWE Network. That's where we watch pay per views and, and wrestling. It's, it's not your premium format to, to push this cinema forward. And as I said, I like the animatronics. The Jim Henson side of things is fine. You're taking what's known from the games, fine. But the rest of it, absolutely not. Awful. Don't go and watch this film. Just watch something else. I'm sure you can find something else better to do. You're desperate to go to the cinema. God, maybe even Taylor Swift if you haven't already been. I don't know. 
that supports the cinemas more. It's not going to the studio, I guess. But um, I'm going to politely round up because I've got nothing more I can say and I don't want to sit here moaning. I don't like doing this these types of reviews. But here we are. So that's going to be it for today's video. Sorry if you're a fan of the film and you like this. I'd be curious to know who does like this film. So please do comment if you do. If you don't like the film, let me know why. There's been a few of other reviews I can now catch up to. Really positive POV, uh, Ren Geekness, a few others I know have done their reviews. So I'm going to be watching those very shortly. So yes, this is going to be it for this video. We'll be back live on Sunday. We're going to be going through everything we watched with another episode of the entitled Monthly Movie Show. We've got Tate's recommendation of film for the weekend for you, which is also upon all of our social media. So do check that out. We've got the Finch retrospective continuing this Monday. There's a lot in the pipeline. We're heading into November. We've got Doctor Who returning. We've got Disney 100th anniversary. We've got a load of other stuff. So do follow us. Do support us. We appreciate everybody that's jumped on board with us recently. And until the next time, take care.